our team and welcome to another video of doing being of becoming where we aim to inform impact influence and inspire it is 2022 which means that it's a new year new me new goals it's february now meaning that in january we all were in the scramble of setting our goals and setting our intentions for the year which is good but a lot of what happens is during this time we set goals out of pressure or we set goals for the culture we set goals because it is the right thing to do um people will ask us at the beginning of the year so what are your new year's resolutions and although we may have things we may want to achieve during that year um the, the intent and motivation behind them may not necessarily be that strong and what does that lead to when we set new year's resolutions for the culture or for clout or just because it's the right thing to do we essentially set ourselves up for failure because a lot of the time when we set goals we are identifying areas in our life that uh, need change and a lot of those times those things that you have identified have need or to need change um, have some emotions behind them so we are either embarrassed with how things are at the moment uh, we are ashamed we are frustrated or we're feeling hopeless and when we set goals or when we set new year's resolutions um, and don't eventually achieve them then this um, creates new negative feelings or just reinforces those feelings that were there in the first place the stages of change model that i shot last year i mentioned that stage two is contemplation and contemplation is where you come to the realization that something needs to change but there is no commitment to change so you have intellectual knowledge that something needs to change but there is no emotional shift there and what that can look like is you eating a greasy plate of food and saying yo i need to eat healthier while you continue to eat this plate of food or getting into your clothes and being like yo my clothes aren't fitting anymore i need to lose weight those you are being faced with the facts and that's you know intellectual knowledge um, and the realization that something needs to change but there is no emotional buy in there that will actually lead you to creating that change and then there's stage three and stage three is preparation and this is where you have the readiness and the intent to take the action so you put into place an action plan but also you count the cost so what that looks like is what will you have to lose in order to achieve this goal what will it cost you to achieve this goal and also and i think something that not all of us actually do is what would it look like if i didn't achieve this goal so what does not achieving the goal actually cost me and a lot of the time the the idea and the thought of things staying the same is enough to actually motivate you to carrying out your action plan because it's good to have an action plan but if there's no emotional buy in there if you don't um, count the cost if you don't see what you could potentially lose then nothing is going to happen or you're going to start and go into your action plan and quickly you're going to relapse into old habits and old behaviors because the game just didn't seem that great for you to help you continue towards the pursuit and that's the mistake that a lot of us make we jump straight from the contemplation stage to the action stage but the saying does go that that those who fail to plan plan to fail preparation is so key and it's actually the most important part in ensuring that this change is sustainable when we don't count the cost when we don't fully interrogate um, and inspect what would be necessary from us when we don't fully um, predict the challenges that we may encounter and how we can actually uh, move through these challenges whenever whenever those things do come up then we're going to freeze mode and we're going to flight mode and that can lead us straight into a relapse which then again reaffirms those negative feelings that moved us towards wanting to create the change in the first place so the question then becomes how do we restructure and reframe our goals in order to make them more achievable a lot of us just end at the this year i want to and at the vision board and although these are great places to start it cannot just end there 
follow through is very important and a lot of the time a lot of us end at the top of the pyramid but it's so important to work our way all the way down to the bottom because that's where the change actually starts in effect and what does that look like it looks like breaking our short-term goals down to monthly weekly and even daily goals and that's setting your intention for today what actions can you take today in this moment that will help you to in effect and gradually lead you to your grand goal a patient of mine recently introduced me to the concept of kaizen and that's a japanese idea of continuous improvement that's doing little things and putting in place little processes that will eventually lead to a great change and that also includes setting smart goals and setting smart goals is maybe something that a few of us could be familiar with and that's setting goals that are specific and measurable uh, attainable realistic and time bound and a lot of us don't set goals that are realistic and realistic can look different for each and every single person that although the main goal could be perhaps to make more money or to be more consistent in work or to lose weight but realistically that could look different for different people right so would it be realistic for me for example to try to lose 30 kilograms probably not because then i will end up being very malnourished but for somebody else it may be realistic and also given the time period in which you have given yourself to achieve this goal is the end point realistic and a lot of the time those are the things that we fail to interrogate which lead us to failure because the goal wasn't smart enough it's not that we didn't work hard enough but it's just that what we were actually trying to achieve was just not realistic so in accordance with making smart goals and making realistic goals they need to be personal to you and personal to your current situation so for someone who has chronic depression for example maybe a goal for them on a daily basis would be to get out of bed maybe make their bed and you know leading into the overall goal of for example improving their mental health or being consistent it's really about being personal to what you are going through and you know that actually also takes a lot of self-awareness the second way that i think we can really try to reframe and restructure our goals is instead of striving is to just accept um, in dbt uh, acceptance comes before change and acceptance can look like look different for a lot of people so in the example that we've given of weight acceptance could be you being honest with yourself about the current behavior um, that you have actually been playing out or, or the current behavior that you have been having that have led you to this undesirable point for example or if it's about managing your finances better it's about being honest with yourself about what your credit score looks like what your finances look like and the behaviors that may have led you to this point point. and because when we don't acknowledge what has actually been happening then it makes it difficult to try and actually put in place um, a system to change because what are we actually changing before we change we need to accept so if your goal for example is to have healthy relationships or to go into a healthy romantic relationship maybe acceptance for you could look like accepting and being honest with yourself about the toxic traits that you bring into a relationship or about the trauma that you haven't healed from that keeps um, attracting you to the wrong people reframing and restructuring our goals can also just look like readjusting existing goals we have to be honest with ourselves that although we can set the smartest goals we can not everything lies in our control and that is just something that we're going to have to accept as well and a lot of the time when we set to achieve goals a lot of things come to disrupt those goals for example covid has been a huge one of those um, and bringing into that things that lie outside of our control like grief like the economy um, you know people's actions around us that may affect our ability to achieve our goal so it's also about being honest with ourselves and accepting those as well um, and making the necessary adjustments just because you weren't able to achieve a goal in time it does not make that goal invalid it just means that um, being able to interrogate what actually happened in, in that scenario what lay inside of your control that may have led to you not achieving that goal and what is outside of your control 
that may have led to you not being able to achieve that goal and putting in place the necessary measures that will help you then to be able to achieve this goal what it also look like actually is striving for goals that aren't necessarily within the norm so that could be um, finding inner peace or going on a retreat breaking from the routine of the world um, growing spiritually and a lot of the time we may know what we need which is also very imperative to being able to set in our goals we may know what we need but we may feel too ashamed or or too embarrassed to um, admit that to say that out loud to commit to goals that will help us to give ourselves what we need because we may, func we may function in systems and structures and environments where our needs are shunned on uh, are shunned upon and it's also very important to have that courage and to be honest with ourselves and to set goals even if they may go against the current so what i'm saying basically ladies and gentlemen is that if you have cut and paste goals la salando throw it out the window and start again start again from an honest place start again from a reflective place also there's no use uh, coming up and, and setting new goals when your goals from last year from two years ago from three years ago are still pending right just because those those dreams feel like and those goals have been dragging doesn't necessarily mean that they are not valid anymore and there's no shame in um, prolonged goals as well um, so yeah so it's about you know recalibrating and being honest with yourself um, and setting personal and realistic goals now that you're on day 16 of whatever challenge you're on motivation and the intrinsic need for change are important to number one create change and secondly sus to sustain it so if your goals are generic or aren't personal or realistic to where you are right now forget about it forget about trying forget about achieving forget about sustaining it ain't going to happen if you aren't motivated and if you don't actually have the intrinsic need to see a change and if they are copy and paste goals as i'd like to call them then you are going nowhere with those and i'll tell you that for free and lastly only commit to change in areas where you see change is necessary make sure that there is enough motivation behind your change and there is a personal and intrinsic need for the change if you don't see change necessary anywhere then it's all Gucci, baby. Until the next video, happy goal setting, everyone.